We come to you live from the Kampala Serena Hotel. NTV does bring you a live event, the returning of the body of the let Jacob Olanya, who gets to be returned to the country. Today, the 1st of April, 2022. My name is Priscilla Regina Naloga, and a good afternoon to you once again. When we get to look at the life of Jacob Olanya, he was born on the 23rd of March, 1956, 1965, sorry, and we get to look at him breathing his last on the 20th of March 2022, nearly two weeks ago. The life of Jacob Olanya was one that was characterized by so many things, among which he was an agricultural economist, a lawyer, and a politician who served as the Speaker of the 11th Parliament of Uganda since 2021 until 2022. He was elected to that position on the 24th of May 2021 after defeating his rival, the then incumbent speaker, Rebecca Aditwala Kadaga. And of course, he served as deputy speaker of the Ugandan parliament from May 2011 until May 2021. Olanya was also the member of parliament re representing the Omoro County constituency, Omoro district, a Choli sub-region in the Uganda's northern region. And so we get to have his body returning to us here in Uganda. What you're seeing there is live coverage of the airport and we get to have Dennis Onyango bring us more details and correspondence from the Entebbe International Airport. But still looking at the life of the fallen speaker who was born in then Gulu district and he was born to Nathanael Lokori and Karen Atwan and he attended St. Joseph's College, Layibi and then he also went to Dr. Obote College and then after he went to Kololo Senior Secondary School here in Kampala for his O and A level education. Back in 1988 he joined Makere University the oldest university in East African community where he started agriculture economics he graduated in 1991 with a Bachelor of Arts in that subject. Thereafter, the same way, yeah, he entered the law school also at Makere University, graduating in 1994 with a Bachelor of Laws degree. He served as the speaker of the University Students Guild during his stay at Makere. And in 1995, he attended the Law Development Center, where he obtained a postgraduate diploma in legal practice. Practice. When we look at his career, following his graduation from the LDC, Olanya worked as a lecturer at the center. During the same time frame, he began private law practice at the law firm of Olanya, Onaria and Company Advocates. In 2001, he entered a mainstream politics by successfully contesting the parliamentary seat of Omoro County in the then Gulu district and the non-party system, also known as as the movement political system. He was, however, a cut holder of the Uganda People's Congress, Congress, which is known as the UPC, and he also participated in the peace talks between the government of Uganda and the Lord's Resistance Army rebels. In 2006, standing as a UPC candidate, he lost his re-election bid. And in July 2006, he quit the UPC and joined the National resistance movement, which is known as the NRM. In 2008, Jacob Olanya served as the chairman of the Commission of Inquiry into the controversial sub-lease of Chiseka Market, one of the municipal markets in the city of Kampala. In March 2011, Jacob Olanya was elected to represent Omoro County, then in Golo District, in the ninth parliament, this time on the NRM ticket. He was elected as Deputy Speaker of Parliament on 19th May 2011. We get to see pictures of the airlines and dignitaries that are yet to be receiving the body of the left Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, still following through his career following the February 2016 general election. Olanya was re-elected as Deputy Speaker of Parliament on 19th May 2016. In the vote conducted by secret ballot, he received 300 votes, while Mohamed Nsereko received 115 votes. On the 13th of July 2019, Olanya was awarded an honorary, an honorary doctorate of divinity by Zoe Life Theological School USA, 
acquired the title and doctor enabling him to be called Right Honorable Dr. Jacob Olanya. On the 24th of May last year, Jacob Olanya was voted Speaker of Parliament in a race against his former boss, Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, and Tira Municipality Member of Parliament, Ibrahim Semuju. Jacob obtained 310 votes against Kadaga's 197 and Semuju's 15. At Entebbe International Airport, let's take a look at these pictures as we get to have the remains of the former Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, returning home.
What we see there are pictures of the A-plus funeral service that is going to be managing the remains of Jacob Olana as he's being returned home this afternoon. Of course, we do have the new Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, also with that proceeding and a lot of other dignitaries and leaders that are at Inter Interbe International Airport to receive the remains of the late Jacob Olander. Now we just want to look at the program and how it's going to be running as of today. First April 2022 at exactly 2 p.m. the body is going to be arriving at Interbe International Airport which is what we are bringing live to you and then you do have the casket to be received with full owners. A few leaders and family members are going to be allowed to be witnessing that ceremony. Immediately after the casket will be handed over to a Plus Funeral Management to take care of it. Then we do have another event that will be happening on Sunday the 3rd and Monday the 4th of April 2022 at exactly 9 a.m. The body will lie at the home of the speaker in Muyanga where friends and family as well as well wishes will pay their last respects. There will be a small service conducted and attended by a few people on Sunday. More to the program into the barrio of the Let Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olana, on Tuesday will be looking at the body being moved to the Parliament of Uganda where the Right Honourable Speaker will be laid for the members of Parliament to pay their final respects. And so that is part of the program lineup that's going to be taking place as we get to lay the final remains of Jacob Olanya. the international airport Entebbe. Of course we do have the former vice president Sekandi present among the dignitaries to receive. Uh, what you see right now is Anita Among who is the new speaker of parliament of Uganda. She's having a moment of grief in there finally receiving her former comrade and workman. She's being consoled by the minister of health Dr. Ruth Achen and together they're having a moment in which they get to console themselves as they receive their dear friend and their colleague in public service. The vice president is also present, that is Jessica Alupo, and we also get to see her being a part of the delegation that is receiving the remains of Right Honorable Jacob Olana, it is a sad day in the country of Uganda. Sitting Speaker of Parliament passing on and um, we will continue to look at this program and follow it as NTV. At Entebbe International Airport you do have the current Vice President standing alongside the former Vice President and family members also present to receive the body of the late Right Honorable Jacob Olanya. We do have the Prime Minister also. We've been reliably informed that she is present amongst this delegation also to receive the remains of the late Right Honourable Jacob Olanya, the Prime Minister Robin Anabanda. We also do have family and friends that were invited for this reception of the remains of Jacob Olanya. It is a heartbreaking day. It's a sad day. get to listen in to what is happening with the proceedings of the reception of the remains of the late Jacob Olanya right from Entebbe International Airport.
The body of the Right Honorable Jacob Olana is already on ground at Entebbe International Airport. As you have seen, we do have a number of dignitaries, members of parliament and ministers that are there to receive the body as well as family and well-wishers that were on invitation. Now we just want to take a look at the program as it stands in the proceedings that will take place thereafter. Today, after the body has arrived at Entebbe International Airport, airport aboard Ethiopian Airlines. The casket will be received with full honors, which is something that we're yet to expectedly see. A few leaders and members are present for this ceremony. Immediately after, the casket will be handed over to A-plus funeral management. On Sunday the 3rd, as well as Monday the 4th of April at 9 a.m., the body will lie at the home of the speaker in Muyanga, where friends and well-wishers will pay their last respects. There will be a small service conducted and attended by a few people on Sunday. On Tuesday, which will be the 5th of April 2022, at 9 a.m., according to the program, the body will be moved to the Parliament of Uganda, where the Right Honourable will lead the members of Parliament to pay their final respects. The casket is being disbarred from the airlines, and what we see there is... The Prime Minister, Robina Nabanja, we do see the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Monk. We do see Dr. Ruth Chan, Minister for Health, all among the procession that is receiving the body of the late Jacob Olana. The family of the late holding hands.
The country has received the body of the late Right Honorable Jacob Olana into the country today, 1st of April 2022, a day that will never forgot, be forgotten in the history of this nation. Please note that the national flag continues to fly at half-mast until the day he will be buried, which is Friday, April 
8th, the day of Barrio. Until then, there will be flying of the national flag at half mast. We will be getting more updates uh, from the concerned parties and the organizing committee of this Barrio arrangement. And NTV will be giving you every live coverage, update, and correspondence as and when it builds up. We do take a break, we return. On NTV. Problem in a definite. Make it try to enjoy. Balai in a definite. Make it try to enjoy. Sika nakata uru uru no definite. Tonight on NTV. Now we do. What's up, beautiful people? You now already we know. Truly, what we do. Truly, outside. Island to island to island. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, sexy ladies, bad boys. It's a one name Y Kibenda. Friday no. You know where I go, Governor. Beat Mike within TV. You don't know. Say this Friday, sour coming in 5 p.m. Show up. It's gonna be mad. And guess what? Every first Friday of the month, you'll have exclusive VIP access to Kampala and East Africa's number one night spot. Club Governor is where we shall be, where you can get to chill with your favorite hosts, DJs, and top artists. <laughs> You already know, man, it's gonna be a lituation and vibration right here on the station that turns on your walls. TV's hottest stage <laughs> with the freshest names in the game. Fresh music. She is in love with her hosts Linda Dane, Sammy Watala, and Daggy Nice. Catch NTV The Beat every weekday at 5 p.m. We are NTV The Beat, and we turn on your musical world. On the all-new season of the NTV Style Project, we check you in on a healthy lifestyle. It has no additives, no sugar, no processed sugar. Everything in that is natural. Let you in on the latest trends in beauty and skin care. Now, if you scrub your body um, with coffee scrub, you will definitely eliminate that roughness on your skin. Make it your stop show when it comes to men's style and grooming. The first step when you wash your face, make sure you wash your face with the warm water. And then you can use a towel to dry it out. So when the beard is uh, damp, that's when you apply a bit of uh, beard oil. Guys, you get your pins and papers now. <laughs> We meet and mix with the trendsetters in fashion, beauty, and style. Brian, tell me, what was your inspiration behind this outfit? The stars. Where do you normally shop from when you travel? It depends on what you have done and how much I like in no matter the shop. Be bold, be stylish. Catch the NTV Style Project, Fridays, 7.35 p.m. on NTV. 
This is NTV. We have watched the show begin. We have traveled the entire country in search for commercial farmers. Cassava is now a cash crop in Teso. Farmers from across Uganda have benefited from agriculture. Somebody who is doing fish farming, this is an opportunity, a huge opportunity. In that, the market and the demand is already available. I realized there was potential goat farming. I started with around uh, 30 goats. You don't need a lot of money to start, but rather the heart and determination. Intending farmers is to have a positive attitude and start. Doesn't need the person to have gone to school or to have not gone to school. Possibly keeping is one of the projects that have money. You go home, you come back to a visit honey. And who said there is no market? Like that fish pond where it is, I've stocked now 700 fish. What I've seen in agriculture is that the market for produce is there. All you need is you to make a difference. Everywhere you go, people do just about the same things, but we thought if we could just put some spunk into agriculture. Farming comes in many packages. It takes courage, determination, focus, and above all, the zeal. I have a passion for animals. Stop feeling pity for yourself. Don't blame it on anyone. Stand up and do something. Farming is fun. Join us on this program and let's make the world we live in a better place. You, the viewer outside there, don't you see it is just lively? Art Seeds of Gold, every Saturday, only on NTV. TV's hottest stage With the freshest names in the game Fresh music With your hosts, Linda Dane, Sammy Watala and Daggy Nice. Catch NTV The Beat every weekday at 5 p.m. We are NTV The Beat and we turn on your musical world. In the world of music and entertainment, NTV got you covered. Take your lunch break in style with me, Christopher Hanam, and Bem DJ. Join me every single day from Monday to Friday from 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on The Vibe right here on NTV Again. This guy love me, he do my body down on on the beat, we bring your favorite artists, favorite artists from within and of course beyond our country's borders. No my darling is now. Say, tell me what you need from me. And of course, when it comes to giving you the most accurate information and news about the Ugandan music industry, nobody got you like we do. Young you are coaching. I wanna see you regular, regular. Let's go! Lockdown.
thank you so much for being with us here at NTV and we continue to follow the procession as we get to receive the body of the late right honorable Jacob Olanya Naloga Priscilla Regina is my name and we continue to have a more dialogue of course with uh, Jackson Onyango who is on the ground to give us details of what's taking place with the honorary that is expected to be given to the body of the late Jacob Olanya program will move okay uh, welcome back to this live broadcast from Entebbe International Airport. That is the old airport or the airbase whereby uh, leaders from government ministers are here to receive the body of the late Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, who passed on in Seattle two weeks ago. Just here, uh, the delegation is led by the Speaker of Parliament, uh, Anita Amo. Uh, the Vice President Alupo, and also the Chief Justice is here, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament Thomas Tayeba, and several mini ministers, religious leaders, uh, basically lined up here, not forgetting the family is also here, led by the father to the late Speaker. So any time from now, we're expecting to receive the body of the late Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya which will be coming in from the new airport where the Ethiopian flight 350 landed a few minutes ago. That's like about 40 minutes ago when that flight landed at Entebbe International Airport. Of course, there it was received by the Vice President, Jessica Lupo, who had again to journey to this point uh, where they are going to officially receive the body. There is going to be a short ceremony here that will start with the pole bearers receiving the body as uh, soon as it arrived. A distance away from here, there are actually the actual traditional dancers who will be the first to receive the hearse as it steps in into the, uh, the old uh, airport here. And then the body will be given to the pole bearers who are uniformed policemen. And then the members of parliament, uh, the ministers, religious leaders, there will be a short prayer that will have to be said first here and then of course viewing. Uh, what we have heard just a few minutes ago from the Minister of Information, Communication, Technology and National Guidance, that is Chris Veromunsi, is that from here uh, all those that are gathered including the members of, of the family, uh, the, 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 the Chief Justice, they will be leading the way up to the funeral home where the body of the late Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, will spend uh, the night that it at the funeral home that is being managed by the A+. Plus. Uh, from there, uh, of course, the body will stay there up to around Sunday when it will be taken to his home in, in, in Muyenga, uh, where, of course, for two days the body will be there before it will, uh, when it will later be brought to Parliament, where it will also have to spend the night at Parliament as required under the provisions of the law. Uh, from there, that's who, of course, after that, there will be a ceremony at Kololo Ceremonial Grounds. That is on Thursday, uh, where the, 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 the state funeral will take place. Members of the public will view the body at Parliament before it is flown to Omoro District, where he will be later laid to rest on Friday. That will be 8th, and 8th will be observed as a public holiday as required by the law. It is a somber mood here, as you can be seeing already in the pictures. Of course, this was an expected demise. Uh, nobody saw it coming, but it is what it is. Uh, Olanya has been hailed as a strong man who supported this country, an accomplished politician, a lawyer who, of course, for the last 10 years, he was the Deputy Speaker of Parliament before he actually became the Speaker. His speakership was did not last long enough. It was just for a period of less than a year, that's nine months. But even during the nine months that he was the Speaker of Parliament, uh, he was on and off. He actually shared about six sittings of that session and the Deputy Speaker, Anita Among, had to take was to stay at the parliament throughout that, that period until his demise. Now, as I speak, actually, the house carrying the body of the late speaker of parliament, Jacob Olanya, he just arriving over there, and my camera person will show you 
up to as the body arrives and uh, the traditional dancers, that is the wola, will be accompanying the body here to where the pole bearers from the uniformed police personnel will be receiving the body. This is all being done under the provisions of the law. So it is a state funeral, of course a high profile person, number three in this country, and therefore the, for the next eight days or so, uh, this is what the public will be treated to as the country mourns the Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya. It is a somber mood here at uh, Entebbe Air Base, where very shortly the body will be making its way. Uh, of course, uh, just uh, a reminder, Olanya is a person who studied at Lalogi Primary School in the current district of Omoro. Uh, there we, we talked to his OB uh, a few days ago when we were in Omoro and he indicated that actually when they were there they had seen that certainly Olanya would become a leader in, in his life because he participated in most of the activities in school whether co-curricular and I was a sharp person in school and later on also he would go to Kololo Secondary School here in Kampala for his A-level. Uh, that's before before he went to university, to Makere University, where he did a bachelor's degree in agricultural economics, but later on he would take on a course in a law degree, whereby he became a lawyer, and at that people who worked with him. So he, he was an accomplished lawyer, and he can't be remembered for the peace negotiations that is, he carried out. Olanya was a member, he became a member of parliament for the first time in 2001 under the the UPC ticket, and uh, du, 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 during that period, he also happened to have chaired the legal parliamentary committee. And what will be, can be remember during that time is that uh, uh, that's when also the term limit was removed and most people remember him but in 2006 he did not take back that seat not until 2011 because he lost so in 2011 that's when he returned to parliament and by that period he had already joined the national resistance movement party a process that yesterday Richard Todwong said told us that he was part of it in convincing him to actually move away from Uganda People's Congress to the National Resistance Movement Party. And uh, since that time, he was elected the Deputy Speaker in 2011, and he served for a period of 10 years as the Deputy Speaker before getting into, again, the much competitive race uh, for speakership of the 11th Parliament, which he managed to clinch from his predecessor, that is the Honorable, Right Honorable Rebecca Kadaga. Uh, but as much as he managed to clinch that seat, he was unable to actually stay in Parliament and carry out with his duties that maybe the nation was yet to get the he was yet to get the best of Olanya. Olanya is a person who was who went to the was taken to the United States of America about uh, uh, two months ago uh, because of his ill health. Much as he was taken on a flight as able to person, today he has been returned here at Entebbe International Airport in a casket. Uh, a sad moment for for the country. Uh, we're yet to get the best of Olanya indeed. Now, as I speak, of course, the house carrying the body of the late Olanya is making its way here, where government leaders, religious leaders uh, are here waiting, plus the family members are here waiting to receive the body of the late Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, who passed on about two weeks ago. Uh, after he fell Ill, uh, Ill and was flown to the United States of America. The body uh, was flown to the country and the United States of America. It was received by the Vice President. As you speak, this is not what many of us have seen in the past. And I'm going to leave you with an ambiance of what is happening here as the body is received by the leadership.
But we want to thank you for bringing the body of your servant, the right honorable speaker of the Ugandan parliament back home. Thank you, Lord, for every effort that was put in place to save his life. But it was time for him to go. And now as a family, as a church, and as a nation of Uganda, 
Father, we are heartbroken and we are praying, Lord, that you will give us the grace to be able to bury our brother with dignity and with honor and to the glory of your name. May you strengthen everybody who is here. May you strengthen the members of the family and the Ugandan family at large, that, Lord, we will know that you reign even in this situation. May your glory be seen in all of these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And that was the prayer here, said by a bishop of the Anglican Church, as the body of Olanya uh, was received by the Vice President, accompanied by the Speaker of Parliament, Anita Among, the Chief Justice, uh, the Deputy, uh, Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Thomas Dayeba, and now the ball bearers uh, accompany the body to the house where from here it will be moved to the funeral home where it will stay until Sunday. Let's just get the command of, from the pole bearers here and the police force, which is directing activities here at the air base. Here, all those that are gathered are going to accompany the body of the late Speaker of Parliament, Jacob Olanya, to the funeral home in Kampala. Uh, of course, in Kampala, it will stay there until Sunday. Uh, right now, the poll bearers from the Uganda police force are carrying on with the last activities here at the Entebbe Air Base before the body is taken away. It is a somber mood here. Uh, with, of course, we have mourners who were gathered here at Entebbe International Airport. Uh, for now, the body of Jacob Olanya is being taken into the house uh, that will move the body from here to Kampala. Of course, the family members are here, the brother who was as well in the United States uh, days before Jacob Olanya passed.
What we have just seen there is the body of the late writer Abud Jakobolana being received at Entebbe International Airport. Of course, it came through the old Entebbe Airport. It was received and put into the car of the funeral management, which is A plus funeral management, that is going to be taking care of the body. We do have Minister Chris Wariomunsi speaking to us. Let's take a listen. The body will be driven to the other side. And then we reorganize ourselves how we shall escort the body to the funeral home. So I beg your attention that we listen to Her Excellency, the Vice President, who is representing the government of Uganda at this function, to say a few words. Thank you very much. The Right Honorable Speaker of Parliament, His Lordship, the Chief Justice, the Deputy Speaker of Parliament, colleagues, Honorable Ministers, colleagues, members of Parliament, the leaders of NRM, led by the Secretary General, the team from Acholi subregion, and the family of the Right Honorable Jacob Olanya. Today, we officially receive the body of our departed brother, the Right Honorable Jacob Olanya. We indeed receive the body with utmost sadness and grief and government is going to accord the late Right Honorable Jacob Olanya a state funeral. The Right Honorable Jacob Olanya was a national leader and therefore his life and work has a national bearing. I would like, therefore, to call upon all the people of Uganda to remain united as we grieve, as we carry on different programs until the final day when we shall be in Lalogi. I would like to pray that the Lord strengthens the bereaved and I send my condolences to His Excellency General Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, the President of the Republic of Uganda and the Speaker of Parliament and the Deputy Speaker and did all members of Parliament and all the people of Acholi sub-region, but also all the people of Uganda. May the soul of the Right Honorable Jacob Olanya rest in eternal peace. Amen. You know, what was the message behind the grumpets that you are uh, taking a few minutes now? Yes, that was the Vice President of president the vice president of uganda jessica alupo who has been giving speaker was accorded a royal welcome back home so when we talk about the drumming it doesn't make sense it was the, the traditional dance that's how we welcome prominent people we welcome him home we we'll bury him with royalty as a prominent son of the soil. Thank you. That was also <laughs> Chief Justice giving him a word or, or based on a question that was asked by one of journalists here on why he was received with the dance or the traditional dance, which of course is called Bola dance, and he says that is a royal way the actual people receive or accompany their disease whenever they are passed on. 
And so that's the same that was accorded to the body of Lanya as it, it arrived here at Entebbe International Airport. Right now, those who have been here, the dignitaries and the investigators, are going to be making their way, accompany the body, the house, uh, all the way from Entebbe to Kampala uh, through the expressway, of course. Back to you in studio. Why? Thank you so much, Jackson Onyango, there for that coverage and correspondency. What counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It is what difference we have made in the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life we lead. And I'm pretty sure each one of us has now picked a good example from the late right Honorable Jacob Olana. With the life he lived, he used it to impact society. But before we get to look into that, we want to just give you a recap of of how the program lineup for his burial arrangements by the start is going to proceed forth with Sudil Pierhanga. On Friday 1st April at 2 p.m. Olanya's body will arrive at Entebbe International Airport aboard Ethiopian Airlines. The casket will be received with the full honors. A few leaders and family members will be allowed at this ceremony. On 3rd and 4th April, Olanya's body will be at his home in Muyenga, Kampala. Friends and well-wishers will pay their last respects. There will be a small service conducted and attended by a few people on Sunday. The program shows that on Tuesday at 9 a.m., Olanya's body will be at Parliament, where he will lie in state. Legislators will pay their final respects to the man who was the Deputy Speaker for 10 years before he became Speaker last year. The state funeral will be held at Colorado Ceremonial Grounds on Wednesday 6th April starting at 9 a.m. Only 1,500 people have been invited to attend the state funeral at Colorado Celebration Grounds, and these will include the executive, members of the judiciary, members of parliament, foreign dignitaries, family members, cultural leaders from the Acholi sub-region, heads of departments and agencies, and all those people have not been invited, been told, to stay away. The Archbishop of the Church of Uganda, His Grace Dr. Kazimba Mugalu, will be the main celebrant. At 3 p.m., the casket will be airlifted to Omoro, La Lodge Village, the speaker's ancestral home, where it will be received by the family and the church leaders. The burial ceremony will be on 8th April, which will be observed as a public holiday. The budget for the burial of Olanya, for which the Ministry of Finance has requested 1.8 billion shillings, has raised debate on social media, with some saying the government is spending too much money. Members of the public need to know that the Speaker of Parliament is the third in rank in the country's leadership and he deserved such a befitting burial which anyway is legally provided for therefore i would draw your attention to the burial activities planned for and agreed upon rather than to dwell on discussing the budgets. Olanya died on 20th March at a hospital in Seattle, US, where he had been admitted over a month. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV. Thank you so much, Sudil Biarhanga. Right Honorable Jacob Olanya has been described as one of the strongest pillars among the people in northern Uganda. Indeed, he has left a big gap. May his soul continue to rest in peace. That was our live broadcast. Now we return to normal programming. Priscilla Regina Naruoga, good afternoon.